So I didn't really know what I was getting into. Wow, well, I wish I didn't see the needle. Woo! My face felt like it was on fire. It feels a little bit zippy. Ooh. Definitely feel burnt. Almost done. This process can be a little bit intense. It was definitely a big day for my face. Women are biohackers by nature. We're Lauren and Katie. We're taking a look at the wildest health hacks, wellness treatments, and the most cutting edge biotechnologies. We're taking you inside and unlocking the secrets only women could. This is Biohackers. Exosomes, V-cells, lasers, and EBO2. If it sounds high tech, that's because it is. We're in Utah's Park City to experience the new altitude of skincare biohacking at Doser Clinics, a medical practice centered around the exciting new applications of stem cell therapy. Today, we're meeting with anti-aging physician, Dr. Amy Killen, to experience what she calls the inside out comprehensive skin rejuvenation treatment. Join us to find out how this next level biohacking experience is raising the bar for anti-aging treatments. Welcome to the Siri Clinics. We heard that you're the leading doctor in anti-aging. We're going to be doing what I call the inside out comprehensive skin rejuvenation procedure. It's going to involve filtering your blood, doing some ozone dialysis, laser treatment, and we're gonna do some microneedling injections with PRP and exosomes <laughs> and red light therapy, oh all in one God. session. What are we not doing? <laughs> <laughs> the idea is that healthy skin, you know, really does kind of come from the inside. Inside. This is definitely a next level treatment. So we do a lot of skin rejuvenation, hair restoration, using stem cells and exosomes and other sort of regenerative medicine techniques. So what is the blood filtering exactly? So with EBO2, we're gonna take all your blood essentially out one arm, clean it, and put it back in your other arm. All your blood? Body. Yeah. Wow. We have patients do the EBO2 first as a way to kind of filter and clean the blood, and then we use that blood from the patient to do the procedures. So is any of this gonna hurt? So we use a topical numbing cream to help with pain. Otherwise, the laser and the microneedling would be a little bit uncomfortable. And why the laser? I was a little nervous about the pain, but I was more concerned about how my skin was going to react. It seemed like it was going to be something intense. As soon as she found out yeah. lasers, I looked right at her because she's never done a laser before. This process is can be a little bit intense. You know, people who come here are generally looking to kind of do the next big thing, and they're they're really excited. But yeah, it's a lot. It's a it's a it's several different procedures that we're doing back to back, and so it's it's not for the faint of heart. So what are we going to look like when we leave here today? Red, little tiny bits swollen, possibly a bruise. You won't look too crazy. You look a little crazy. <laughs> I was so pumped for what we were about to do. I didn't care what we had to do. Let's do it before I chicken out. <laughs> All right, here we go. So Lauren and Katie will come in and we will uh, do a quick history on them and then I'll take them to the treatment room. So they started me out with the EBO2 treatment first. EBO2 stands for extracorporeal blood oxygenation and ozonation, where we're essentially removing a lot of the extra debris in blood. So the lipids, the cholesterol, um, fat particles, heavy metals, toxins. If we can filter out some of these things, then you may be able to slow down aging. We have an anesthesiologist that will start the IV in each arm. My expectations were super high because I love anti-aging skin stuff. I don't know if this is gonna work here. You know, like I've always had issues with my veins before. It's not working. Most of the time they're putting things into your body. Is it working at all? Not like it should. In this case with the EBO2, they were draining all your blood out of your body. I always have drama around my freaking veins. From time to time, unfortunate, as we saw with Lauren, if that vein collapsed and would only let you know little bits of blood through. You no clean that. blood has come out yet? We looked at a third location in her ankle. In the end, it wasn't enough. They couldn't get any blood out of my body. It kind of sucks. My veins just weren't cooperating. OK, so unfortunately, I think we're going to have to stop the EBO2. I see a lot of blood going through a lot of tubes, so I think right. I'm ready to call it, too. <laughs> But we'll do everything else still. Even though I wasn't able to get the EBO2 treatment, they were able to get enough blood for the PRP. I'll pull off some of that blood, about 60 milliliters, what I'll be using for a later part of the procedure. I really didn't know anything about EBO2 at all. If I would have known what it entailed, I probably wouldn't have wanted to do it. I do get a little bit nervous about needles because the needle was really big and gnarly. Since you feel a little bit more anxious about the procedure, mm -hmm. I'm gonna use a little nitrous. Okay. Okay. It's called laughing gas for a reason. Usually it kind of makes you feel a little jolly. And I'm not going totally under, no, right? No, no. Okay. Far from. The nitrous actually felt amazing. Yeah, it's starting to feel pretty good now. Yay. <laughs> it also just calms you down so you're not as stressed when the needle's going in. Put a little pinch. It's very common for us to use nitrous to calm a patient down as well as get some vasodilation. Looks like blood is coming out. Yeah. 
We're getting some flow. A couple minutes into the night dress, I felt like I drank a bottle of tequila in a good way. Hey, Lauren, you got ripped off not getting to try this. I was a little disappointed that they didn't give me the night dress. Why didn't they give me the night dress? Woo! <laughs> You've created a monster. After all the needles were in and everything was running smoothly, very strange to have literally all the blood in your body taken out of you and put back in. So we have the blood coming out of this arm. Okay. And it's going in through the UV light, which is gonna kill some of the microorganisms. And then it's going from there up this filter. At the same time, it's getting ozone gas applied to it. So the red blood cells are getting kind of supercharged with oxygen. And it's going back down here. And the last step here is photobiomodulation with red light. And it really increased the mitochondrial um, energy production. And then it's going in your other arm. And you can see how much redder, how much sort of brighter it is over here because it's just sort of been totally. supercharged with oxygen. Wow. This is like literally an oil change for your body. You're treating yourself from the inside out. Almost done. All right. Success. And I've been really happy with how energized I felt afterwards. We want to use the blood that's cleaned out with the EBO2 for a later procedure. Then we'll do the fractional laser treatment. So your lips and your tongue might go a little numb. I apply numbing cream because this, these procedures can hurt a little bit. I was a little nervous because if they needed to numb me that much, it seemed like it was going to be something intense. I thought I wasn't going to need the numbing cream because I kind of like to feel the pain sometimes. These are for your eyes. And the rest of you don't look directly at the laser, could blind you, so just uh, don't. This is a, a heat-based laser treatment that is going to create little columns of, of disturbance, columns of heat. You ready? Started going over the middle of my face and then moved around and went over the different areas a couple times. So it pretty much like shoots out a light that kind of like burns a little hole in your skin. How's your pain? The laser itself felt kind of warm and stingy. So it kind of feels like I'm being branded with like a little hot piece of iron, but not, qu <laughs> not quite, but a little bit. It feels a little bit zippy. You know, it's a little bit of a, a stinging. Even with the numbing cream, I still felt some pain with that laser. The forehead's definitely tender, kind of like someone took an elastic band and they were like snapping it on your skin. I'm trying not to flinch because I don't want you to turn it down. I wanted to make sure I got the best results. Survive the forehead. Woo! Definitely feel burnt. Good. They want to wound your skin. Well, if you want it turned down, let me know. Nope. They're causing injury, and then the body is trying to heal that injury, and the process will create healthier looking skin that can help increase collagen production and elastin production. Laser's done. Next up, the little injection. And then we use that blood from the patient. It's cleaned out with the EBO2 to get the PRP, the platelet-rich plasma. So now I have just the regular blood here and put it in the centrifuge. And that's gonna separate out the red blood cells from the serum. In the serum are the platelets. And the reason we wanna use that is because the platelets have all these great growth factors in there and kind of create uh, rejuvenation signals in the body. So then I'll combine it with the exosomes and that's what I'll be injecting. These might hurt a little bit and we can always stop. All right. I wish I had the Close your eyes. She was injecting my face in my problem areas, around my eyes and around my mouth. So this is your PRP. The injections were probably the most painful part of the procedure, um, which she kind of gave me a heads up on. I wish I didn't see the needle. I want you to focus on my finger. You're gonna feel a poke, but think about my jiggling. Here we go, a little poke. So it was painful. I think the tapping helped distract. I'm going to focus not so much on the poke, which is now. She taps other areas of your face to sort of distract you, even though that doesn't really work. Woo! I know. You hear a poke that goes through your skin, and like deep within the skin tissue. There's one over here that's trying to bleed a little bit. It like really hurt, and the numbing cream was topical, so you know, I could feel all the needle. Yeah, it almost feels like you're injecting the bone when you put the fluid in. This part does hurt. It's not the needle so much, it's that the PRP and the exosomes burns when it goes in. The exosomes come from amniotic fluid. Placentas and umbilical cords are donated, which have within them growth factors and cytokines, as well as messenger RNA. Basically, the injections are gonna just further increase the uh, repair and rejuvenation of the tissue in those areas. It definitely feels like there's fluid there's in my fluid. face. Okay, but it'll, it just, it'll go it away. Dissolved. They definitely made that area swell up afterwards. I do feel swollen and already a lot younger because my face <laughs> feels like so much fuller. The fluid will be absorbed by the skin within 24 to 48 hours, so the swelling doesn't last very long. But the actual injection marks left bruises too as well, which lasted for like two weeks afterwards. Now I probably just look like a chipmunk. Beauty hurts, doesn't it? That probably should not be my tagline. <laughs> <laughs> and as if my skin wasn't beaten up enough, she decided to do microneedling on top of 
the laser and injections. This is your own platelet-rich plasma. So then I'll use the same combination of PRP and exosomes. I'll apply that combination onto the skin. This is the microneedling device. It has these little tiny needles at the end that are gonna go up and down really quickly. Uh, but they create these little channels. They allow us to have topical agents get really well absorbed into the skin. The microneedling was pretty easy. By the time I'd done the laser and the injections, it kind of felt like no big deal. You do it in the nose. Kind of funny, huh? Funny. I mean, I feel like, if anything, this hurts the most. Really? Mm -hmm. But that was kind of like a walk in the park after, you know, what I just went through. I like to layer treatments, though, because you can kind of get a lot done in one day and focus on different parts of the skin. Okay, and the very, very last step is I'm going to put on top of all of that your exosomes and PRP together. And because we've created little tiny channels all over the skin, those channels allow for better absorption of those things deep into the dermis of the skin. You have some spots that kind of like a little bit of pinpoint bleeding, which is totally what I wanted. Yeah. But when I apply this topically, you'll see that those spots just kind of go away. Wow. After that is done, they'll be a little bit red, a little bit pink. Um, and so we'll do a little bit of a photobiomodulation with red and near infrared light. My face literally was beaten up in tiny little wounds all over the place. My face felt like it was on fire. It was definitely a big day for my face. So let's get you hooked up to this thing. So this is the red light therapy, and I'm just gonna wrap this around your face. I love red light because it has a lot of benefits on the skin, especially after doing procedures of any sort. It can actually further activate the stem cells in the area. We can increase nitric oxide production, which is great for healing and blood flow, and increase the mitochondrial energy production as well. So we can see less bruising and faster recovery time. And then after that, they'll be all done and they'll feel hopefully amazing. Afterwards, you feel like you've like ran a marathon. You feel like exhausted and tired because I think your body knows it goes through a lot. I was really glad I didn't have any important meetings going on because I definitely felt like I'd been through the ringer. Thank God it was like cold in Park City because we walked outside and it was like an ice pack for your face, which was actually quite nice. What we see is we see improvement in skin texture, in skin tone, in skin colors. We can see evening out of, you know, if you have too much pigment in the skin or sunspots or scarring. And then I really started to see the benefits about two to three weeks afterwards. My skin just looked tight. I looked like I slept maybe two years. I think the biggest difference I noticed in my skin um, was a shrinkage in my pores and that I felt like I had a healthy glow and my skin looked nice and thick. I think that the field of longevity anti-aging is just getting started. We're going to see this exponential growth in this field in the next few years. The whole experience was me scratching the surface of the next level treatments that are available. This was the most ultimate skin hack I've ever experienced.